Welcome friends, let's take a look at solving a variety of quadratic equations, a basic skill. So v plus 8 and the v plus 2, those are your factors. So you do v plus 8, then you set that equal to 0, and then you set v plus 2 equal to 0, then you solve each of these. Solve the first one, you just subtract 8 from both sides, so v is equal to negative 8. And then the other one, you just subtract 2 from both sides, so v is equal to negative 2. And then right here, these, okay, these two, both of them, not just one, not just the other. These are your answers right here, okay? This is uh, one of the most direct and simplest kinds because it's just already factored, so you said factors equal to zero. V squared minus 11, V plus 30 equals zero, not factored. You gotta factor it first. So, in other words, here you need this. You need a number times some other number that's gotta equal to 30, and then a number plus that same other number that's gotta be equal to negative 11. So to factor this, you got to look for the factors of 30. Like, for example, 30 is like 3 times 10, you see? But when you add them, so 3 plus 10, that's not going to give you... 3 plus 10 is not going to give you negative 11, so it's useless, okay? So then you try to write maybe as 5 times 6. Well, that's equal to 30, but the issue is 5 plus 6. As you can see, it's not equal to negative 11, so useless, okay? All right, so then try negative 5 times negative 6. When you multiply them, you get 30. That's correct. And also negative 5 plus negative 6. That's going to give, give you here negative 11. That is true. So that means negative 5 and negative 6 are the answers that we need. So we factor them as follows. V minus 5 and then V minus 6. And this is equal to 0. Negative 5 times negative 6, positive 30. Negative 5 plus negative 6, negative 11. From here, you just set each factor to 0, so either v minus 5 is 0, or v minus 6 is equal to 0. Add 5 to both sides, so v is equal to 5, and then add 6 to both sides, so v is equal to 6. And that's it, so these are your answers right here, let me emphasize, right? These, both of them, not just one, not just the other, both of them here are your answers right here. So factorization, and then setting factors equal to 0. Let's move on. This one says x squared equals 20. Well, here what you can do is just uh, take roots, so take the square root of both sides, like this, let's do that, so square root on the left, that's going to be here, x squared and the square root, and then on the right side, so plus or minus, square root of 20. And on the left, the root operation and the 2 and the exponent, those are opposite operations, which means they cancel off, therefore all that remains is that x is equal to plus, x is equal to plus or minus the root of 20. You just have to simplify this. So you want to rewrite the 20 so it shows a perfect square as a factor. So for example, 4 times 5. That would be the useful form. Let me show you something, right? Like if you do 2 times 10, not useful here, okay? The reason is 2 and 10, not perfect squares, so not useful in, ter in terms of simplification. So then you try the next one, plus or minus something like 4 times 5, useful. Okay, useful because 4 is a perfect square that's why that's useful so now you can distribute the root operation to each part plus or minus the square root of four independently times the square root of five independently and this becomes plus or minus the root of four is two and then you copy the root of five you leave it in this form the reason is this quantity the root of five if you look at it carefully it's kind of messy it's about 2.24 so just leave it in this nice clean mathematical form these are the answers in other words let me be clear here. So x, in other words, is either equal to positive 2 root 5 or x is equal to negative 2 root 5. This way. There are two answers as before in the previous two questions. Let's move on. Now this says 5x squared minus 4 minus x. So we want to make this into the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0 first. So we have a quadratic equation with a 0 on the one side. We don't have that form now. So we need to make it into that form. So 5x squared, and what you can do is you can do plus x minus 4, and then is equal to negative x plus x. So what I'm doing is adding x on both sides. So I have 5x squared, and then plus x minus 4. On the right side, negative x plus x is 0. Common mistake is here people just, for some reason, end up with this, and they drop the equal 0 part. No, it's an equation. You need the equal zero the entire time. It's an equation you're solving. Now, this one has to then be factored. This one is different in terms of factorization. So what you can do is, if nothing else, you can always use the AC method, okay? What I call AC method with grouping, if you forget anything else, like this. 
and try to factor with that method. So a is 5, c is negative 4, so we end up with ac being negative 20. And now what you look for are the following. Two numbers that okay, multiply to negative 20 and add to 1. Why 1? Because 1 is the coefficient in the middle there. Some people can guess the factored form of the expression. That's fine. Okay, whatever works for you. Okay, but in case you cannot guess it, I'm showing you a method for doing it. Anyway, so you're going to multiply to negative 20, you're going to add up to 1. So then you look at such numbers. So let's see. If we do 5 and negative 4, well, that's going to give you negative 20. That's good, right? And then 5 plus negative 4. So 5 plus negative 4 this way, that's going to give you a positive 1. Now it looks like the, it's the right combination already. So let's see. Once you have it, then you use those to rewrite the middle terms. So you're going to have 5x squared plus 5x, let's see, minus basically yeah, 4x this way, and then minus 4 is equal to 0, like this. So I've just rewritten the middle term. 5x minus 4x is, remember, 1x positive. So this is allowed. Then from 5x squared and 5x, you can pull a 5x out. Let me break this down. So in other words, look, 5x squared is 5x times x, all right? and then 5x is really like the way to think about it. It's 1 times 5x, if you like, or 5x times 1, whatever, either way. For the other one, it's like plus, and you can put negative 4x minus 4 within the brackets. I'm being really detailed at this step. Some people don't like this. That's fine. So you skip and do it your own way. Okay, so you're going to have 5x and then 5x. That's going to go out, and what's left within the parentheses is x plus 1. Between negative 4x and 4, you can write this as follows. Be careful. Negative 4 times 1, and this is the negative 4 times x, correct? So look very carefully. There's a negative 4 and a negative 4. So that goes outside the parentheses. What's left within the parentheses is x with the positive 1, not negative 1 anymore. The negative goes with this 4 right here. So it's x plus 1 within the parentheses. This is equal to 0. So then you put them together. 5x minus 4 times x plus 1 is equal to 0. Equal to 0. And then you bring this over here. So now you set each factor to 0. So 5x minus 4 is equal to 0 is a possibility. x plus 1 is equal to 0 is a possibility. Then you solve each one. So for the first one, then you just add 4. So 5x is equal to 4. And then divide by 5. So x is equal to 4 over 5. And then for this one, just subtract 1. So x equals negative 1. And these are your two answers. You can check them if you like. So I'm going to check them by computer up here. Look, if I do 5 times 4 over 5, and I square this, minus 4, let me do the computer step here. I'm going to tell the computer to try to find the answer for us. So, okay, so let me try to highlight. So this is equal to negative 4 fifths, this part. You see, negative 4 fifths, okay? So this is equal to negative 4 fifths. On the other hand, if you just plug... 4 fifths into the right side where it says negative x, that's also negative 4 fifths, right? So the two sides are equal, so 4 fifths is a solution. Check the negative 1, so 5 times negative 1 quantity squared minus 4. Does this equal to negative of negative 1? That's what we are checking. So work the left side a little bit here. When you do that, it's going to be positive 1, okay? On the right side, the negative of negative is negative, so it also checks, you see? So these are the right answers, in other words, 4 fifths and negative 1. I've done this in a lot of detail. If you can skip some of this, it's fine, whatever. Let's move on. So 2v squared plus 13v plus 43, oops. 2v squared plus 13v plus 43 equals uh, v plus 7 quantity squared. Okay. So here what you have to do is you have to expand on the right side first. So you're going to have 2v squared okay, plus 13v plus 43 is equal to this. Now you got to expand by FOIL, so it's v squared. And then you got to do v times 7 doubled, so that's 14v. And then you got to do 7 squared, which is 49, this way. Common mistake here is to, when you, people still do this, they begin with this. And all they do is they do this, v squared plus 7 squared, like this, okay? Uh, let me be clear, not valid. Don't do, don't do this. It's not allowed, okay? You have to use FOIL. You have to remember v plus 7 squared means, in other words, v plus 7 times v plus 7 this is equal to the product of two binomials and by foil that comes out to be v squared plus 14 v plus 49 anyway then you gather all the terms on one side so you can do 2v squared minus v squared v plus 13v minus 14v plus 43 minus 49 all of that is equal to zero i've just moved 
v squared to the left through subtraction, 14v to the left through subtraction, 49 to the left through subtraction. And then you just work on that. So 2v squared minus v squared is 1v squared. Okay. And then 13v minus 14v is negative v. And then 43 minus 9, that's negative 6. And this is then equal to 0. That's your quadratic equation at this point. So in other words, you don't even need the 1 here. It's just v squared minus v minus 6 equals 0. Try to find two numbers that will give you that. So v, and let's see, v, and this has to be equal to 0. Let's find them. Let's see. Can we do negative 3 and positive 2? Well, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. And here the coefficient is 1, so this works out. Then you set each factor to 0. So v minus 3 is 0, or v plus 2 is equal to 0. So either v is equal to 3, or v is equal to negative 2. Again, you can check these solutions in the original equation if you like. They should work out to be these values. Let's go down to the next question. So 2x squared minus 9x plus 5. Let's do this one by the quadratic formula. Okay? So in other words, a is 2, b is negative 9, and c is 5. Remember, for the quadratic formula, you want ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. You want that form, and we have that form. We plug into the formula, so x is equal to the following. Negative of b, so that's negative of negative 9. Okay, and then plus or minus the square root of negative 9. And this is then squared minus 4 times the value of a, which is 2 times the value of c, which is 5. Then you divide by 2 times the value of a, which is 2. That's the quadratic formula. Just plugged it in. Okay, so then you go through this. So 9, okay, plus or minus, and then 81. Let's see. Now be careful here. This is negative 4 times 2, which is negative 8. Then it's negative 8 times 5, which is 40, and this is hovering over 4 in this case. And then we take it from here, so you're going to have 9 plus or, minus, plus or minus the square root of 41 hanging over 4. 41, and that's it. 41 is just 41. You can't simplify this. So in other words, x is either 9 minus the square root of 41 divided by 4, or x is 9 plus the square root of 41 divided by 4, this way. So there are two separate values of x. Let's look at this one. 6x squared minus 2x equals 3. So this one might require, for example, some decimal manipulation. It could be kind of messy. So 6x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. So I want ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. I want that form of the equation. Now, so a is 6 b is negative 2 and c is negative 3. Just plug these values into the quadratic formula. Let's see, let's do that right now. x is the negative here of b, so that's the negative of negative 2, plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared, minus 4 times the value of a, which is 6, times the value of c, which is negative 3, divided by 2 times the value of c, of a rather, which is 6. So let me remind you what I just, the quadratic formula, negative b, plus or minus, okay, so plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's so we got to identify a, b, c, and then 2a in the bottom. Let's go to the process. So x is equal to 4 plus or minus, and then in the top you have 4. Let's see, negative 4 times 6 is positive, well, negative 24, and then once you multiply by the negative 3, that's when it becomes positive. And in the bottom you have 12. So then you have x is equal to, 4 plus or minus, and then here you're going to have 4 plus. So what is this number here? 24 times negative 3, negative 24. So you're going to have positive 72. You can check it if you like. 20 times 3 is 60. 4 times 3 is 12. You add them, you get 72. And this is hovering over 12. And then x is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of 76 divided by 12. Let's look at 76. Try to break it down, see whether we can simplify it or not. So, well, what are different ways of writing 76? Just take 76 and divide it by 2. You can always begin with that, if nothing else. Right? Divide 76 by 2. So when I do that here, it's going to give me a value of 38. Okay, so I'm going to have here 38 times 2. But then 38 is divisible also, isn't it? So 38 divide that by 2. So when you do that, you're going to have, let me see here. You end up, uh, one second. So that's 19. So this is 19, so that means you can write this again now as 19 times 2 times 2. In other words, you can write 76 as 19 times 4. 
grouping the 2 and the 2 together. Now continue down below. So x would be equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 times 19, showing a perfect square under the radical as always. And now 12. The 12 in the bottom, I would at this point write as 4 times 3. And then this 4 up top, well, let's see. Maybe you can write that as 2 times 2. I'm anticipating the fact I'm going to distribute the square root over, that's why. And then, in fact, uh, maybe write this as 2 times 6 even better. Why am I doing this? Because when I take the root of 4, I'm going to have a 2 up there, that's why. Let's continue. So now I'm going to have x is equal to 2 times 2 plus or minus, and then distribute the root independently to each piece here. So 2 times 6. All right, continue from here. So x is, then you're going to have 2 times 2 plus or minus, and then 2. Well, the root of 4 is 2 by itself, and then the root of 19. And all of this here will be hanging over 2 times 6. All right, so x then would be equal to. Now from the numerator, you can factor a 2 out, and what's left is the 2 plus or minus the root of 19. And this whole thing is hanging over 2 times 6. And now between numerator and denominator, you can just cancel this 2 with this 2. And once you've done that, that's going to give you x is equal to 2 plus or minus the root of 19, 19, and then divided here by 6. And again, this separates into two separate answers. You can simplify them into decimals if you like, but I'll leave it at this form. Okay, let's move on. Now let's finish up with this one. v plus 1 quantity squared minus 9 is equal to 0. So this is set up for doing by roots because you have something squared. So what you have to do is you have to do v plus, v plus 1 squared is equal to, if you want it to be very formal, minus 9 plus 9 is equal to 0 plus 9. So add 9 to both sides. And then, of course, these two right here would cancel off. And then you have left here, v plus 1 squared is equal to positive 9. From here, you can just take square roots. So square root both sides, like this, v plus 1 squared equal to plus or minus square root of 9. Remember, on this side, you need a plus or minus. And now on the left side, the root. And the square root basically cancel off. So you just end up here with v plus 1 is equal to plus or minus 3. Right. Now you do v and you subtract 1 to the other side, however you choose to think of it. So v is equal to plus or minus 3 minus 1. You can do it this way. Or you can put minus 1 plus or minus 3. It makes no difference. So now, remember this is a plus or minus. So this is like v is equal to 3 minus 1 as a possibility, the plus 1, and then v is equal to negative 3 minus 1 as a possibility. There are two of them. So v is equal then to 3 minus 1, which is 2, or v is equal to negative 3 minus 1, which is negative 4. And then these are the solutions, the equation in this case. That is it for this one. So please leave a like, please subscribe. I hope all of this has been helpful to you. Please leave some comments below. I read them sometimes, and then I try to take feedback from them, see how I can improve and so on. But I'm going to leave it here. So thank you. Please leave a like, please subscribe, and I will see you in another video.